Now the subject that I'm going to go into is called Egyptology. Now I chose this subject Egyptology to go into because this is a philosophy and a doctrine that a lot of our people here in America, you know, are indulging in, practicing and following. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the scriptures and I want you to follow along with me and we're going to investigate Egyptology and we're going to find out according to the words of the Most High, is Egyptology the right philosophy for our people to be following and observing? Because, you know, you have a lot of our people here in America that are exploring into several different, you know, religious ideologies and philosophies. And this is one of the major reasons why our people are confused and why a lot of our people are lost because they're indulging in several different false philosophies out here that's kind of deviating our people and straying our people away from the truth. So what we're going to do is we're going to investigate Egyptology to find out is this the right philosophy that our people should be dealing with? And is this the right philosophy of God? Now, we're going to go to the book of Colossians the second chapter we're going to read verse 8 beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ so the apostle Paul is warning us in Colossians the second chapter verse 8 beware means to be forewarned lest any man spoil you spoil you means to destroy you spiritually mentally and psychologically destroy you right and uh beware least any man spoil you through philosophy through philosophy that's what a lot of our people are indulging in today leaving the bible and running after strange philosophies and strange doctrines that's not the truth and this is what a lot of our people are doing because they're trying to find truth but they're running away from the truth this is the truth this is the only book that can teach you the true word of the Most High, the Bible. But a lot of our people are straying away from the scriptures and running into various other philosophies and various other doctrines that's polluting our mind and destroying our mind through philosophy. So this is what the apostle is telling us again, Colossians 2 and 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the philosophies and teachings of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ, meaning they're, they're not dealing with the, 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 the Bible. They're not dealing with the laws, the statutes and commandments in the scriptures. They're dealing with other philosophies out here in the world. Now, St. John, the fourth chapter of uh, St. John, the 14th chapter, verse six, Christ said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no man shall get to the father, but by me, but by a lot of our people indulging, indulging in false philosophies out here you are walking away from the truth and you are dealing with the philosophies in the rudiments of the world now here's what the scripture tells us in the book of um hebrews the 13th chapter i'm going to show you according to the words of the most high that egyptology is a false religion it's a false philosophy just like all the philosophies of the world are false paganistic demonic and evil and wicked and we should not be indulging in these various philosophies that are straying our people away from the truth of the Bible. Because the so-called Negroes scattered throughout North, South, Central America, throughout the Isles of the Caribbean, up in Canada, and dispersed throughout the four corners of the earth of Negro descent, we comprise and make up the original lost and found 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. We are the chosen people of the Most High, and this Bible belongs to us. So to see our people strain into false philosophies and other doctrines is angering the most high now throughout the, the show i'm going to go into that and i'm going to show you that this is the major reason why our people have been brought into captivity and slavery throughout the western hemisphere and throughout the, the four corners of the earth because of our people leaving the true word of the most high and running after these strange false philosophies and these strange doctrines and following strange and false gods if you read throughout the scriptures, the Bible shows you and tells you that that's what the children of Israel did to anger the Most High. 
And a lot of our people today in this present society is doing the same thing as our ancestors did in times past, following false philosophies and false religions. Now, here's the book of um, Hebrews, the 13th chapter. We're going to read verse 9. Be not cared about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, much not uh, which have not profit them that have been occupied therein. So the Bible is saying, be not cared about strange and false doctrines. If it's not coming out the scriptures, don't deal with it. But a lot of our people are walking away from the Bible. A lot of our, let me show you. A lot of our people are walking away from the truth and following false religions and, fall, and following false doctrine. But it was already prophesied in the scriptures that this was going to happen. Here's the book of First Timothy, the fourth chapter, verse one. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed unto seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. There you go right there. The Holy Apostle prophesied that and told us in the latter days, many of our people would depart from the faith. The faith in what? The Most High in Christ. Depart from this Bible, leave this Bible and start indulging in false philosophies and false religions. Let's read that again. 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And that's exactly what a lot of our people are doing. They're indulging in philosophies of devils and philosophies of devils. And that's exactly what Egyptology is. It's a philosophy of devils. It's a philosophy of Satan. And it's not coming out of the true word of the Most High. Now from here, let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus before we get into the dynamics of the subject. I'm just going to uh, pull up a few precepts showing you that the Most High told us to stay away from various other philosophies and, and doctrines. If you have your scriptures, I want you to um follow along with me. This is Ecclesiastes, excuse me, the book of Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, verse 12. And further, by these my son be admonished of the making of many books, there is no end, and much study is weariness of the flesh. Much study is weariness of the flesh because when you start indulging in these different philosophies and these different books, it's kind of um confusing your mind. It's confusing your mind because you was raised up believing in this Bible, right? Now you start indulging in many different philosophies out there that teach against the Bible. You start getting confused. That's why the Most High told you to stay away from these different philosophies out there. Deal with the scriptures because this is the true word of the Most High. And I'm going to show you as we go along that Egyptology, Afrocentricity, Rastafarianism, Afrocentricity, as I said, Islam, Christianity, and all these different philosophies out there are the philosophies of men and not the philosophies, excuse me, the teachings of the Most High. Because those doctrines have, have um, been put together by man. The Most High throughout the scriptures is the author of our faith through Jesus Christ. He is the author and finisher of our faith. You understand? But the scriptures said that many of our people would depart from the faith. Give heed unto seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now here Solomon is telling us in Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, verse 12, and further, the, and, and further, by these, my son, be admonished. Of the making of many books, there is no end. And much study study is weirdness of the flesh. The making of many books, there is no end. There's books on Egyptology, Scientology, um, evolution, Rastafarianism, Afrocentricity, right? Um, uh, different books of several different philosophies out there. Buddhism, Hinduism, Zoroaspianism, right? Islam, Catholicism, Christianity. Meditation. There are so many different diverse books out there trying to give people spiritual enlightenment and how they can get into their inner self and uh, achieve that that Godhead or that God statue within themselves, which is all paganistic demonology and Satanism. Because the scriptures tell you that Christ said, I am the way and the truth and the life and no man shall get to the father but by me. But by you reading these different books. They're trying to give you other avenues, different directions in order to get to that spiritual enlightenment, in order to get to that Godhead within yourself, believing in yourself and denouncing the Heavenly Father and believing in yourself. This is what Egyptology is all about. 
This is what all these other philosophies are all about. Because remember now, Egypt was the beacon of light for a lot of these different um, kingdoms and governments and countries on this earth today. Egypt was that beacon of light. But what light did Egypt bring forth? The light of wickedness and the light of Satanism. I'm going to show you that as we go along. Now, the scriptures told us to, um, to be forewarned for the making of many books are, are many, right? Now, here's the book of um, Isaiah, the 34th chapter, verse 16. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Isaiah 34 and 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it has commanded and, it is, and his spirit it has gathered them. Now, when the scripture says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. This. This is the book of the Lord. This is the book of the Most High. The Bible. So when the scripture says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, this is the book that was given to the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. To our people scattered throughout the four corners of the earth of Negro descent. We are the children of Israel and this book was given to us. And the scripture says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. None, no one of these shall fail. None of the prophecies and the predictions in this Bible shall fail. Okay. Because the Bible says that the Most High is not a man that he should lie. Neither is there repentance in the Son of Man. So we know that every single thing that the Heavenly Father prophesied in this book, it will come to pass. And it says, no one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. Meaning you cannot mate the Bible with any other book. This book stands alone. Okay? And it says, for my mouth it has commanded. The Heavenly Father commanded everything in this book. Okay? And, has, and, and his spirit, it has gathered them. The spirit has gathered the one third of the Most High's people that came back to this understanding. And mainly the ones that are teaching this word. His spirit has gathered us so that we can get understanding of his word and then come back out and feed all of our people. And even other races of people who are, who are questing and desiring for knowledge. That is our job to be a beacon of light to those that are in darkness. That they may look upon us and see the power of the light. Now, let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians. Again, before we get into the subject, this is going to be a long show. So I really want you brothers and sisters and whoever's listening out there to really sit down and listen. Pull out your scriptures and follow along with me because this is going to be a long show. But I promise, I promise I'll get through this as quickly as I possibly can. And hopefully, I pray by the end of this subject, many of you out there in the listening audience will get a thorough understanding of dealing with the philosophies of this world and how we shouldn't be indulging in that and that we should stay rooted in the Bible, in the Bible only. Now, here's the book of um, 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, verse 19. Let's reiterate again. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 19, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh, his, his, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. So the scripture says, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. So all the philosophies out there that you see the world indulging, indulging in is pure foolishness and stupidity. Because the Most High said, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness. Well, what would be some of the manifestations of the wisdom of this world? What would be some of the manifestations of the of the wicked of the wisdom of the people of this world? Think. You have secret society groups out here that push their doctrine among the elite in this world, the rich, the wealthy, the super powerful, the super rich. They join these elite secret society groups and they claim that they are the enlightened ones that have the knowledge that have the wisdom and the true understanding of God and they conceal that knowledge to themselves and for the ones that they elect to come in, right? And they don't shed the, the light that they claim that they have to the masses of the people of the world. They only keep this knowledge and they, they, they hoard this knowledge in for themselves of what they claim is knowledge, but it's actually foolishness with the Most High. All the philosophies and all the doctrines of this world are pure foolishness in the eyesight of the Most High. So here is um, 1 Corinthians 3 and 9 again. 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, verse 19 again. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Now, let me give you an example of the foolishness of, of the wickedness of this world and the so-called wisdom that man claims that he possesses. 
here's a book. Okay, we all can see the, uh, I hope you can see the, uh, the title of the book and even the author. The Illuminati 666, book two, written by William Sutton. Now, I'm going to show you about Freemasonry and Egyptology, and I'm going to show you that these philosophies are paganistic and that they are wicked and that our people should not be indulging in Freemasonry or Egyptology or none of the philosophies that are of this world. And then we're going to go into the scriptures and I'm going to give you more information as we go on in this subject. <clears throat> now here is page 92. Page 93, excuse me, page 93 of Illuminati 666. We'll start on page 93. We will come back to the Rosicrucians in a moment. But let's go on and take another look at some other mystic schools who adopted this name Illuminati. There were other little secrets, uh, there were other little sects of the of Illuminism recorded in history like the Illuminati of Avedon and the Illuminati of Stockholm, 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 but none of them became a threat to freedom, liberty and consciousness. And Christianity, like the uh, Illuminati of Bavaria, this secret order was founded May the 1st, 1976, by one Adam Weisep, a professor of canon law at Ingolstadt, Germany, and an ex-Jesuit priest. Weisep and his order of, of Illuminati we shall study in the next chapter. Now, the Rosicrucians, who claim also to be the Illuminated or Enlightened, say that Thutmose the third of Egypt was the founder of their secret order so they're claiming that ancient Egypt was the beacon of light and the founder of the Masonic order and the enlightenment teachings of the Illuminati right they claim themselves to be the enlightened ones that they have the knowledge the secret knowledge and they hide it from the rest of the world but only those who they claim and claim and deem worthy to accept this secret knowledge and they claim that this was started in ancient Egypt Let's read that again. Now, the Rosicrucians, who claim also to be illuminated or enlightened, they say that Thutmose III of Egypt was the founder of their secret order. He erected two obelisks, obelisks bearing a record of his achievements. One of these obelisks is now located in Central Park in New York. According to the Rosicrucians, after Thutmose died, uh, Thutmose the Third died, his son Amen Amen Hotep took up his father's work in their brotherhood about the end of the of September 1448 B.C. He was succeeded by his son Thutmose the Sixth, who ruled from 1420 to 1411 B.C. Then came Amen oh, Amen. Hotep the sixth, with with whose history all the Rosicrucians are greatly concerned. He was the great the great master in the family of the founders and the one to whom they owe their philosophies and writings used so universally in all their large work throughout the world. He was born in the royal palace of of, of Thebes, according to the Rosicrucians in thirteen seventy 78 BC now they claim that ancient Egypt was the beacon of light and the founders of, of ancient Egypt through Thutmose this is what a lot of our people are indulging in those of are that are dealing in Egyptology and those that are dealing in masonry this is the foolishness and the wickedness of what a lot of our people are indulging in now, let's go on. I'm going to show you more before we go back into the scriptures. And I'm going to show you about ancient Egypt. And I'm going to show you why the Most High told us to stay away from anything that came out of Egypt. Here is the book of um, Illuminati. Again, we're going to go back into it in page 100. We're going to go to page 100. Now, look at the name Hermes from whom these secret societies and occult fraternities say they draw their philosophies. The word Herm says, says Hislop uh, is Chaldean and synonymous with Ham or Chem, the burnt one, 
this name uh, formed a foundation for covering, co covering, coverly identifying Ham with the sun, and so defying the patriarch after whose name the land of Egypt was called. The scriptures themselves state that Egypt was founded by Ham. Israel, Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham, according to the book of Psalms 105 verse 23 to 27 okay what what all this means is mez used by the ancient egyptians to show the genealogy of the name applied this will explain the name egyptian the, the name egyptian names of of kings of egypt such as Ram, uh, ramses which means ra miss the son of ra who was the egyptian sun god whose incarnation was Osiris. Hence, Hermes or Hermes means the son of Her, or Ham, who was Cush, and the sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. Now, this is telling you the origin of the false gods and the paganistic deities that ancient Egypt worshipped. Isis, Osiris, Seth, right? Ra, all these different paganistic gods, Horus, all these different paganistic gods that came out of ancient Egypt, you have a lot of people in this present society worshipping and idolizing these different images and paganistic deities today. In Egyptology, that's one of the major philosophies and doctrines of what's taught in Freemasonry as well as in Egyptology. And you have those of our people that are indulging in this false philosophy. As we go on, I'm going to show you more. I'm going to show you more. Let's go to uh, page 142. Since there have been, from, from the start, Masonic presidents, governors, senators, and congressmen making our laws and governing the affairs of our nation, it should not be too hard for the reader to understand how pagan goddesses that witchcraft exalts that the Roman Catholic Church worships as the as the Virgin Mary is standing on top of the capital of the United States of America. See, the Bible never told us to worship Mary. We honor her as being the mother in the womb in which our Messiah came through. You understand? But we don't worship Mary. They worship Mary. Okay? And the scripture said, I mean, in the verse says, it was not by chance that the capitol building itself was designed after the uh routine or, or the rotunda or dome of uh saint peter's basilica in vatican city james hoban hoban believed it or not J james Ho hoban believe it or not was a catholic freemason who designed the, the capital of the united states and was the chief founder of the federal masonic number one in the District of Columbia. Now here are some more astonishing facts. Has the reader ever wondered how the strange structure called the Washington Monument came into being? Well, in the myth of the Egyptian god Osiris, which de 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 uh, derived out of the legend of Nimrod, Osiris was said to have been killed by a rival god and cut into 14 different pieces. After cutting the body of Osiris into 14 pieces, this rival god threw all the parts of Osiris along the Nile. Isis, his wife, found all the pieces but one, his genital member. Now remember, Osiris was worshipped as the creator, the impregnating force of the universe. So the mother goddess Isis, uh, uh, the, so the mother goddess Ma Isis molded with her hands an image of the dead god's phallus, which was his so-called penis okay and set up one to be venerated as a monument to osiris hence the origin of phallicism so in the temple service of the pagans a coffin with an uh image of osiris's phallus in it became part of the worship of the sun god this same phallic image has been passed down through history to us today it is named the obelisk which even a small child should have seen many times. Gross darkness are the deceptions of Satan. The obelisk 
the sacred phallic symbol of Osiris is now standing in St. Peter's Square at the, the Vatican, which with a cross erected on top of its pyramid, and it's also standing 550 feet feet 555 feet high in Washington DC. And this is the origin of the church steeple. So all this derived from ancient Egypt. You see how ancient Egypt was very wicked and very evil and practiced idolatry and paganism? Okay. So, with showing you that, let's get back into the scriptures now. But let me show you the phallic symbol of Osiris. Here you go right there. This is what you see in Washington, D.C., right? Right? And your church, your church steeples. So when you look on your church steeples in these churches, and you see that symbol, it's it it, it comes from Osiris. And the pagan uh uh myth that was attributed to Osiris. This is why we denounce Christianity and we denounce all avenues of Christianity because of the paganistic rituals that are performed in Christianity. Now, let's go to the book of Leviticus and let's get into the dynamics of the subject now. And I'm going to show you about ancient Egypt and how the most I felt about ancient Egypt. And that Egyptology is a philosophy that we should not be dealing with. Again, the Masonic order, as well as the Illuminati and all these secret society groups all attribute their so-called wisdom and knowledge, which is actually paganism, witchcraft, sorcery, and demonology. But they attribute their so-called knowledge to ancient Egypt. Now, is that something that we should be indulging in? Paganism, witchcraft, sorcery, black magic, the occult? Let's find out. Here is Leviticus, the 18th chapter, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. This is Leviticus, the 18th chapter, verse 1. Let's read it again. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Ye shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which I, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. There you go. Now let's find out. Some of the things that the Heavenly Father told the children of Israel not to do and not to follow after the Egyptians. Let's read this again. Leviticus 18 verse 1 to 3. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt wherein ye dwell shall ye not do. So if Egypt was such a righteous nation with so much wisdom and so much knowledge, why would the Heavenly Father tell the children of Israel not to follow after the customs and traditions of the ancient Egyptians? Now, in the same chapter of Leviticus, the 18th chapter, let's jump down to verse 22, and let's show you one of the things that was going on in ancient Egypt that the people were doing that, that was very wicked and evil in the eyesight of the Most High. Here's uh, Leviticus 18 and 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, it is an abomination. That's talking about homosexuality and lesbianism. We shouldn't indulge in that, brothers. And if you brothers or sisters have done that, repent from it and just don't do it anymore. Throw your prayers up to the Most High and repent from it and just don't do it anymore. You know, just, just, just get it out of your head and just keep moving on. Repent from it and don't do it anymore. But look, here's uh, Leviticus 18 and 22 again. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. It is an abomination unto the Heavenly Father for homosexuality and lesbianism to progress in society. But this is what one of the evils that the ancient Egyptians practiced. Let's show you another one. 23. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself. Therewith, neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there, thereto. 
it is confusion, bestiality. This was another satanic practice of the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Canaanites. Bestiality and homosexuality, laying with animals, having sex with animals. And you see that going on in America today, don't you? You hear cases about it. We definitely hear cases about sodomy and homosexuality and lesbianism. And bestiality goes on in this society too. These are the things that the Heavenly Father said not to follow when you come out of the land of Egypt. And when you getting ready to enter into the land of Canaan, the land that I gave you, so that you can drive these Canaanites out. Don't do after the mannerism of, of what these people did in that land. Because it's pure wicked and pure evil and an abomination unto me. Don't follow it. But follow and observe the judgments in the, in the statues and the commandments that I gave you. And don't do after the mannerisms of the people of the land. Likewise today, brothers and sisters, do not follow after the mannerisms and the customs and traditions of the people of this world today. Because they're going contrary to the words of the Most High. Now... Let's go to verse 20, 27. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. That the land spew not you out also when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people, Therefore shall ye keep my ordinances that ye command uh, that ye commit not any of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. You see that? So that shows you that the ancient Egyptians were committing abominable acts before the eyesight of the Most High in the midst of the children of Israel when, I when Israel was captive in Babylon. I mean, excuse me, in, in Egypt.